Well, I think it's um, still early enough. They haven't drilled a lot of those wells yet. So we'll just have to see exactly how how big a discovery is. I, I, I assume you're talking about the, the new discovery in the Alpine area? Yes, sir. And uh, potentially, if it's as large as um, Apache's saying it may be, it's going to be one of the largest, if not the largest, fields in Texas and the U.S. in a long time. And if it proves up, it will have a substantial impact on U.S. production and certainly Texas production for the foreseeable future. And that, of course, will bring more jobs in the drilling to the state, more tax revenue to the state, assuming we don't get into too bad an oversupply and prices drop even further. Uh -huh. But any new find, it takes a while to find the right recipe to do the hydraulic fracturing to get all the infrastructure in place, get it online. So there's still still a period of time that before we really know if it's going to be as big as uh, the projections show it. When do you think, how long does this already take? When do you think it'll be coming online? Probably three to five years before you get the full impact of it would be my rough, rough estimate. I think one of the best things that could happen right now is to pull a lot of the regulations that the EPA under the Obama administration made a last minute rush to push out the door before the end of his term and I think a lot of them were poorly written and ill-conceived and if we can get a lot of those things stopped before they go into effect would be a huge, huge plus for the in industry as well as for the country. And working back from that, then we need to take a look at a lot of different rules and regulations just to see if they still make sense, and if indeed they ever did. But it's always been a classic struggle for the, the difference whether we're going to regulate the oil and gas industry at the state level or whether we're going to regulate it at the federal level. And the U.S. has historically chosen to regulate it at the state level. But even as far back as the 30s under Franklin Roosevelt's administration, the New Deal, the federal government tried to take over control of oil and gas regulations from the state. That's why a bunch of the oil producing state governors band together and formed the Interstate Compact Commission back in the 30s. And we're still discussing fighting those same issues today. The federal government under this former or the current administration, soon to be out of office, has been trying to take over regulation of oil and gas from the state as long as for basically the entire eight years that they've been in office. And I think time and history has proved that that would be a bad idea. If we had federal regulation, I don't think we would have had the shale boom. We would not be near as far along energy independence road as we've gone the last few years. For example, if we had national rules, we'd probably have the same kind of rules that California and, and New York have on hydraulic fracturing, which basically bans it or makes it so difficult that it's impractical to do in the state. And we wouldn't have had near the increase in production that the country's seen over the last five, ten years. Yeah, it's very good. So you'd be hopeful for the Trump administration to then take this back to a state level? Yeah, I think it would be very, very beneficial if they would go ahead and recognize that it should be in the state level and let us spend our time and energy dealing with problems rather than fighting for turf with the federal government. Well, I, I think immediately as far as the Railroad Commission is concerned, we've got a um, sunset vote coming up in the legislature in 2017. The Texas legislature meets every two years. It will be meeting starting shortly after the first of the year this year. And there's a program that would call sunsetting, which basically means agencies get reviewed every 12 years. And theoretically, the main question is, is this something that should be renewed or is this something that we ought to abolish? 
since I've been on the commission, there's been some controversy about, some, for the most part, some side issues um, as far as the number of commissioners and certain things like that that has caused enough controversy that they've never voted it out as far as being renewed as an agency. They've kind of kicked the can down the road each, each session. This session, we've gone through the first part of the sunset process where uh, commission staff has looked at the Railroad Commission, made their recommendations. Sunset Commission members reviewed the recommendations, discussed them, voted on them, and have sent out their proposal. And that's where we are in the process right now. But the proposal this year that the commissioners sent out, in my opinion, was much, much improved over the previous proposals that they sent out. And they sent out a, a, a reasonable, thoughtful analysis of what needed to be done and didn't need to be done. And I think if the legislature will go ahead and vote in what they suggested, that it will get sunset passed and go on down the road and we'll be in good shape as far as uh, the next 12 years. Go. Another big concern that I quite frankly have looking at the, the near future of the commission is whether we're going to have enough money to continue to fulfill all our functions. One of the major funding sources, the, the primary funding source indeed for the oil and gas division, are permit fees, uh, all types of fees, but um, our largest source of permit fees is drilling permits. Permits. And I think, as I've mentioned many times, our permits have dropped from a high of about 25,000 in 2014 or 2013 to a low, to as little as just eh, right around, I think we're going to end up the year probably just under 6,000, right around 6,000 permits for this year. So, so that's a substantial drop. Funding has dropped before that because of that, and we're, we're going to have to have a source of funding if we're going to continue to keep inspectors in the field, further modernize the IT systems, and just keep on plugging some abandoned wells, orphan wells, and site remediation that we have to do. Well, certainly the oil and gas industry is getting more and more internationalized. I mean, the oil oil has been an international or one mark world market for a long time now. The natural gas is tending that way. It's been more of a regional market, but it's certainly with the, all the LNG that's going on, um, building plants and then shipment is certainly making gas far more of a global market. And I think that's one of the big changes we'll see over the next three or four years as gas becoming a totally global market. But in that context, the, the, the more information you get about what's going on in the world is going to affect whatever you're doing in, in your country of origin or the country that you're doing business and drilling in. So the, the more information you can get, the better decisions you make and the better off uh, you are on your business planning.